you finally got the girl, you finally got the new car, you finally got the new iPhone, the new watch, the new TV, the new PlayStation, whatever. And you find yourself, should say, and then you are painfully reminded that searching for material change and material objects just doesn't quite fulfill you or solve the human existential angst of dis-ease, of unsatisfactoriness. Now, I think it's important to balance, yes, having material objects, pursuing material changes, uh, or acquiring material goods does have some benefit, for sure. And I know we all hear it all the time. You know, it's not what's on the outside that matters. It's what's on the inside that counts and all that kind of nonsense. We know it to be true. We know the pursuit of material objects is not a wholesome way to be fulfilled. Although you will see a lot of people on YouTube, especially these, I'll generalize, you know, the influencer culture who's pushing material and beauty success as the be and end all of human endeavor. Very vain, very shallow, very ridiculous. So in this video, we're going to talk about how the Stoics practice this balance between internal progress and external growth, progress, whatever it is. And I want you to remember it's not knowing. Knowing is not enough to change our experience, to transform ourselves into the person we want to be. We need to embody, we need to bring these things to life in our everyday actions. And that's the ticket. That's the wisdom. That's the skillfulness. It's not being able to articulate these ideas. It's being able to embody them in your daily activities. So today's video will be helping us do that, incorporate those things more into our lives. My name is Mike Stroh. This is the Starts With Me channel. I hope you find this video helpful. Okay, I am reading August 20th from Ryan Holiday's Daily Stoic, and then we'll do some reflection on it. Where it counts. Inwardly, we ought to be different in every respect. But our outward dress should blend in with the crowd. Seneca, Earl Letters, 5.2. Diogenes the Cynic was a controversial philosopher who wandered the streets like a homeless person. A few thousand years later, his utterances still make us think. But if most of us had seen him at the time, we'd have thought, who is that crazy guy? It's tempting to take philosophy to extremes. But who does that serve? In fact, rejection of the basics of society alienates other people, even threatens them. More important, outward transformation in our clothes, in our cars, in our grooming might feel important, but is superficial compared with the inward change. That's the change that only we know about. Hey, straight to the point there, right? What is internal change? How do we blend in with the crowd, so to speak, while simultaneously growing, becoming the best version of ourselves in order to make the world, the world a better place, correct? We want to be moving in the direction that's not only serving us, but serving the people around us, serving the world. That's what it means to be noble, to live the ethical life, to embody stoic wisdom. Okay. I'll try to use personal examples here, okay? I longed for a certain car for a very long time, a Tesla. I finally got the Tesla, and every time, it's been a couple of years, a few years, every time I get in the car, I have a little dose of, yes, you know, I got it, I still love it to death. It's absolutely the greatest car that's ever been invented. Anyhow, uh, I'm trying not to, I hope I don't come across as like gloating or whatever. I'm trying to share with you how this idea impacts my life. Okay. When I am tied to this idea that my material acquisitions, okay, means that I am somehow better 
that I am somehow uh, have accomplished something, whatever, is elusive. It's vain. As I already said, it's shallow. It never really fulfills me. I love the car. It's wonderful. Although when I'm in it driving around, there's a little script somewhere in my brain that's still always comparing myself to other people. So if I see a better Tesla, I want a better Tesla. I have a Model 3. If I see, um, I don't know, a faster car, I think, or not a faster car, another fancy car, I'm like, ooh, my car's better because it's a Tesla, blah, blah, blah. So there's this little script running in the back of my head. Some people call it the sociometer. There's a part of our brain that is constantly comparing ourselves to other people, whether it's our looks, our physical stature, our uh, economic status, our religious status, our racial status, our blah, 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 blah. We can't turn that thing off. What we can do is learn to live with it in a way that's going to be less detrimental to our uh, daily sanity and well-being. And that's the aim here. That's what these Stoic philosophers are trying to teach us. And I repeat this often in these videos, not just the Stoic philosophers, okay? Ancient wisdom, cross-culturally, cross-traditions. Uh, there's a lot of crossover. There's a lot of shared wisdom, okay? So back to me and the Tesla. So when that script is running, okay, I just notice it. And this is sort of where my mindfulness practice comes in. I notice the script. I thank it. I call it out. Sometimes I get playful with it. Oh, wow, that's an interesting story there, Mike. Yes, if you just had a better Tesla, you wouldn't feel bad about yourself right now. Or if you could hold this moment in time where you get the slight dose of ego gratification, then all my problems will go away. It's just this never ending, you can't win the game. So rather than me pursuing another better Tesla or another material object to make myself feel better, in comparison to others, okay, which is self-gratification, ego gratification, self-centeredness, how do I let go of that script, perhaps turn my attention to all the wonderful things in my life that are not material-based, breathe, okay, and slowly and continually return my attention to the non-material. So whether that is the important relationships in my life, whether that is my own internal dialogue, my own sense of peace and contentment with who I am and what I'm doing, whatever the case may be, it's that subtle acknowledgement of the vain outward pursuit that we lie to ourselves that will bring us long-term satisfaction. And it's the returning to the inward, can I find contentment in this moment? irregardless of what's going on. Now, it's important to point out that, I think I mentioned this earlier, it doesn't mean the pursuit of material possessions and further economic success doesn't matter or isn't important. Of course, it's important. It's when we tie our sense of self, our pat on the back for who we are uh, in, our, in terms of our worth, when we tie that to possessions and sort of outwardly success, then we're ultimately doomed to suffer because the, there's no end to that game. That ball or that hamster wheel continues to spin and we can't win. What we can win <laughs> in some sense, I don't know about win, but what we can experience is contentment from moment to moment. And that comes from letting go of the material, returning to the inward experience, reminding ourselves what matters, finding contentment and balance in this moment. So I already said some of the ways you can do that, at least the ways I do that, I get playful with that internal chatter, that never ending script of comparing myself to other people. And I try to breathe, I try to return into the body. Okay, what does it feel like when I'm getting envious or jealous or thinking I'm better than someone else because I have a better car than them or something ridiculous like that? And breathe, notice the energy in my body, remind myself of this delusion or the illusion that this story is telling me and get back to the next right thing. What am I doing now? Am I driving my car? I better pay attention to the road. Am I on the phone with someone? Am I giving my attention to my children? Am I giving my attention to my clients? That's where my attention needs to be in the present moment with the best of my ability, living the stoic, ethical, virtuous pathway to the best of my ability.
Okay, well, I hope you found that little uh, ramble on focusing on the inside journey uh, helpful. Again, as I often say in these videos, you could get out a piece of paper and you could write down on one side, what are all the vain material pursuits that you think are going to bring you contentment and happiness? And what are the inward practices that you can start to cultivate a little bit more? Perhaps it's a little self-compassion, a little loving kindness. Perhaps it's a reminder of what's important. And then perhaps what's the next right thing that you can do? Empower, encourage the inner journey. So maybe that's do a meditation. Maybe let's take a few deep breaths. Maybe that's go pay somebody uh, some gratitude, share something nice with somebody you care about, pay a compliment to somebody. Figure that out. Do your best to practice it from moment to moment. And that is likely going to serve you and those around you. Okay. Thank you again. My name is Mike Stroh. This is the Starts With Me channel. I hope you consider subscribing to the video, liking it, commenting on it, sharing it with someone you think might find it helpful. And I've started a Patreon, so consider uh, giving us a shout out on there. Okay, take it easy. Peace out. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content. And otherwise, have a great day. Peace out.